Some of the films we cover in the best horror movie you never saw are more difficult to find than others, but for the last couple of years, the film we're looking at in this episode has been available to watch on Netflix in several countries around the world. Netflix has so much content, things can sometimes get lost in the crowd, and that's why we want to draw your attention to the 2015 thriller, Night Fair. A French production, Night Fair was the fourth feature film from director Julian Siri, whose previous work has been action films built around parkour and mixed martial arts. Keeping that in mind, it's not surprising to learn the initial idea for Night Fair came from a martial arts expert. That person being the mononymous Terubi, who served as the Caporia advisor on Ocean's 12. When you see Vincent Castle using Caporia to avoid laser beams in that movie, you have Terubi to thank for it. With Serial Ferment and Pascal Sid, Siri fleshed Terubi's idea out into a screenplay. Then the filmmaker cast another martial arts expert in a major role. The mysterious taxi driver at the center of the story is played by Jess Luden, who was a professional MMA fighter for over 20 years, starting when he was just 16 years old. Jonathan Howard and Jonathan Demerger play Chris and Luke, friends who have the bad luck of getting into the taxi driver's cab during a night out on the town. It's a smooth ride at first, but when Luke decides not to pay the fare, despite having a wad of cash in his pocket, things take a turn for the worse. Chris! Sorry, mate. Chris, let's go, let's go! The driver relentlessly stalks Chris and Luke through the city streets, and not even the offer to give him the money he's owed is enough to get the driver to leave them alone. Once he's been stiffed, the driver never shows any further interest in getting paid. Now, he's just out to torment these guys, and whenever someone gets in between him and his prey, he lays waste to them in brutal, bloody ways. The driver isn't the only problem that Chris and Luke have to face over the course of this night. They also have to deal with the fact that Luke is now dating Chris's ex, Ludvine, played by Fanny Vallette. Unfortunately for Ludvine, it doesn't take long for the driver to figure out that she's important to both of the guys he's pursuing. Julian Siri was just in his 20s when he was given the chance to make his feature directorial debut on a film called Yamakasi, produced by Luc Besson. He has said that ended up being a painful experience for him, that he only directed 42% of the finished product. A few years later, Siri directed The Great Challenge, a film he describes as lame, even though he was happy with the visual style. His third film, Scorpion, is one he was more proud of, while admitting that it had its weaknesses. After Scorpion, Siri spent several years working in television and eventually reached the point where he was ready to walk away from directing entirely. It was when he was deciding to quit that the opportunity to make Night Fair presented itself. Siri and the producers put together a plan to make this film very quickly. It was written, funding was secured, the cast was assembled, and the film went into production all within a span of three weeks. The first draft of the script was knocked out in just four days, and a total budget of around a million euros was raised through private investors and crowdfunding. But before Night Fair, Siri was feeling angry and disillusioned with the entertainment business, but through the approach taken to making this film, he was able to achieve real artistic freedom. As he put it, and I quote, we had no censors. We were all alone. We didn't even know if the film would ever come out. We were like 20 year old kids making their first movie. The finished film had some luck playing at festivals. It was able to generate some good word of mouth and was given a best feature film award by at least one of them. Then it landed a major release from Netflix. And that's pretty much where the Night Fair conversation has ended. While many Netflix subscribers have access to it, it's not a movie you hear about too often. Hopefully, that will be changing soon, because it's a film that is absolutely worth watching and recommending to other horror and thriller fans. You have to go and get her. Oh, fucking way, no. We can't just fucking leave her with that guy. The Steven Spielberg classic Duel and Michael Mann's Collateral were the primary inspirations for Night Fair, and the influence of both of those films can be seen in the movie. You have a mysterious driver following people around in his vehicle, like in Duel, while Collateral is reflected in the nighttime in the city setting, the prominence of a taxi cab, and the sequences of violence. Before we reach the violence, Siri gets us to care about the characters who will be dropped into this bad situation, spending the early minutes establishing the complicated love triangle Chris, Luke, and Ludvine are in. Chris and Ludvine were in a relationship two years earlier, until a night when he went back to England 
his home country without giving Ludvine any sort of warning or explanation. Now that Chris has returned to France, he's somehow shocked that Ludvine has moved on in his absence and is now dating his friend Luke. It really seems like he expected her to just sit around and wait for him, even though he cut contact with her. Chris may be a bit of a fool, but he still seems to be the better person than Luke, who is obviously mixed up in some criminal dealings. Ludvine admits to Chris that she might still have feelings for him. I love you. I love you. And while the driver's violent pursuit of her two suitors will be the main focus of the film, Siri and his co-writers have still managed to hook us with the personal drama of the characters. In the midst of the thrills, we're also waiting to find out more information on why Chris bailed on Ludvine and France in general. As it turns out, he may have something to do with what's going on with the driver. It quickly becomes clear that this isn't just about the cab fare. There are some awesome scenes of the driver menacing Chris and Luke without even getting out of his vehicle. A moment of the cab circling the guys as they stand in the center of a roundabout brings to mind a shark circling something it's about to sink its teeth into. A scene of the guys hiding in a parking garage while the cab drives between the rows of vehicles brings to mind the style of a slasher movie. And that's not the only time you'll be thinking of slashers while watching Night Fair. In fact, there's even a moment when someone compares the dark, hulking figure of the driver to Jason Voorhees. The driver goes on to prove that he is quite capable of racking up a healthy body count, much like Jason. This isn't a straightforward slasher like a Friday the 13th, but it did start out that way. Night Fair was written as a slasher and went into production as one. As filming went on, Siri began to see the driver as something more than just a killer cabbie. He dropped in some hints that there was a hidden depth to this silent, menacing character. And during the editing process, he became certain that he and the other writers needed to come up with a backstory for the driver and dig into his motivations with some additional photography. That's when the driver drifted away from being a Jason type and became a character that Siri would be more likely to compare to the Punisher or Wolverine. The revelation of what exactly is going on with the driver comes in a third act twist that may be the dividing line that determines whether or not someone is going to consider themselves a fan of this movie. Some may be disappointed that we learn anything about the character, but that we find out he isn't just a rage-fueled maniac. Others may be fascinated by the unexpected mythology the filmmakers crafted for the cabbie. Mythology that, in a cool stylistic choice, is even conveyed through the use of some animation. Night Fair doesn't end up being the film you might expect it to be when you start watching it. And maybe that's why it's lesser known at this time. But that subversion of expectations is also part of what makes it a great viewing experience. Siri said he wanted to, and I quote, subtly move away from the cliches to highlight the characters and their emotions, bringing more depth to the story than one could imagine. The atmosphere at times leans more toward romance, at times more toward an action film with original fight scenes, and at other times, quite gory, with surprising shots that become more and more violent. Our driver reveals the unease of our daily lives, the violence and the perversity that looms above us. He lurks, he hunts, He's always where we don't expect him. While it's greatly appreciated that Siri wanted to give the driver and the people he's pursuing some extra depth, of course the most entertaining and satisfying scenes in the film are the ones where the driver is unleashed on unlucky victims. Animal lovers may applaud how the driver handles a security guard who mistreats his dog. And one of the most memorable scenes involves the driver taking on a gang of criminals with a samurai sword in his hand. The only letdown is that moments of people getting slashed and impaled feature some unconvincing CGI blood. Luden, on the other hand, is 100% convincing in the violent scenes. He has a very intimidating screen presence. And it's totally believable when he bashes people around like they're nothing to him. Which makes sense, given his former profession. We see the driver take down groups of people on a couple different occasions. So we know Chris and Luke aren't going to be able to do anything to him when they try to tag team him in the climactic sequence. But it's fun to see them try. Even with one hand latched on the captive Ludvine, the driver is able to fend off their attacks. It might not always be clear whether he's a villain or a hero, but it is always clear that the character is a badass. Night Fair was a great accomplishment for Siri and his collaborators. What starts out as a simple stock and slash filled with bloodshed turns into something different by the end and getting to that surprising destination is a hell of a trip. This quickly made film turned out to be an entertaining, fast-paced, hard-hitting thriller. 
But the best thing to come out of it may be the fact that the artistic freedom Siri enjoyed on this production managed to revive his passion for directing. After seeing how cool Night Fair is, it's exciting to know that we may have more Siri projects to look forward to in the future. If you haven't watched Night Fair yet, you should seek it out, whether on Netflix or otherwise, and give it a spin. Thank you.